<laughs> so how many valves are in a gas drive? Two valves. Now it's sort of a tricky question because in a gas dryer, if you remember the, uh, the burner assembly, let's see if I have a picture of it still up here. Oh, I have to uh, open. It'll open. Uh, gas dryer. Okay, let, let it open up the gas jar. If you look, the, these are the two valves, and the tricky part of the question was a lot of people are confusing the valve of the gas burner with the solenoid that goes on top, the black solenoids. Because how many solenoids do we have on the burner? There's three solenoids. There was the hold, the assist, and valve number two. And that was a question. If you look here, there's a line, because they call it a booster coil and a holding coil, and they call this a secondary coil. But in the schematic I gave you, it was called a hold, assist, and valve number two. Okay? Um, hold, assist is on valve one. And the valve number two, this is the magnetic coil. So we, we talked about those. Remember, the hold and assist open it, but the hold keeps it open. All right, so let's go back to the test. So the answer here is how many valves? The answer is two. If the question was how many solenoids or how many coils were on the burner, there would have been three. Okay? Um, the next question, if you can... You can tell if a regulator for a gas dryer is set for LP by what? And the answer should have has a pin inside the cap. I took the pin off. I showed everybody the little white piece of plastic on there. And I said, when we switch from natural to LP, the natural one doesn't press on that diaphragm inside the valve. We go back to this picture here, and you can see this here. Natural allows the diaphragm to come all the way up. But LP has a pin that pushes down on it, and it doesn't force it down. What it does is it's here, but it stops the diaphragm from going up too high because we're switching from natural to LP gas, and LP gas is a higher pressure. So if we didn't change how that diaphragm in, in the regulator moved, it would go all the way up, and it would block the gas flow completely from coming through here. So that was that little plastic pin. And then yes, yesterday when we went over the regulator on the stove or the day before, there was a little white piece of plastic. Remember I said you flip that piece of plastic inside the cap over. Yeah. All right? So let's go to question number three. What are the one types of surface ignition for the gas stove? And the answer was spark. Um, there was a couple of other questions on here that I didn't go over because... This one we talked about. This one has a spark ignition. Some of them have a, a standing pilot, which means there's a little flame underneath here all the time, whether you're cooking or not. But it's wasting gas, it's burning gas. Now you have advantages and disadvantages of a standing pilot assembly. And an advantage is if you had a power outage or a hurricane or something, the pilot will still light your burner for cooking. If you had uh, electricity, you can do this, spark ignition, but if you don't have electricity, spark ignition is not going to light it. We say, well, I could just take a, a lighter or a match and light it, and it'll work. That's okay for the top of the stove, because when you're cooking, the flame doesn't turn on and off. But in an oven, you cannot light an oven valve with a lighter and keep it going. It has standing pilot ignition. We didn't talk about that. We just talked about the glow ignition. So I removed some of the questions that were on this test because this is a recycled test from other tests in the past. Okay, any questions on that? No? Okay, uh, number four. In a gas dryer, what are the names of the three gas valve coils? And I went over them with you. Here it's secondary coil, booster coil, and holding coil. 
or hold and assist on valve number one and valve number two. This depends on the manufacturer of the product. And I made this question in the test. If you notice, it's got like a box here for filling a blank. It didn't grade it for you. I went over, and if you were close enough with the words, I gave you the answer. If you were valve number two, someone wrote valve number two, that's okay, because that solenoid coil was called valve number two coil, okay? So let's go to number five. In a glow coil ignition system, a low current read on a gas valve can indicate what? Anybody know? In the glow ignition, this one here, on this ignition system, we talked about the proper voltage or the proper amperage that it needs to. Current is amperage. So if you're checking this and the amperage is lower than it's supposed to be, what do you think the problem is? We have a bad igniter. We talked about that. If the igniter's old and, and going bad, it won't draw enough electrical current to open up the safety valve. It could be one-tenth of a volt off and the gas valve won't open. You change the igniter. Okay? Number six, in a glow ignition system that has a gas valve in blank with the igniter. Series? It's in series. And I'll show you that on the test where we did the, uh, the matching. Number seven, when pressing down on the spring inside the regulator. Can be guys? For installation, this would be done for LP or for natural. LP. Just, LP. Very good. When adjusting a surface burner with an adjustable orifice for LP gas, the orifice, remember, that was the piece on the end. Was this an adjustable orifice? Yes. No. No. I told you guys that this one had no adjustment. You had to replace it. This one, the oven, this is an adjustable orifice. You can adjust this one, okay? Now, if we go back over the question, it says when adjusting this, the burner with an adjustable orifice for LP gas, what two things need to be adjusted for each burner? Well, if you look at this burner, one, you need to adjust the orifice itself. For natural, it's going to be up and off the valve. Not totally off, but high up. For LP, you tighten it down with, a, with an open end wrench. You tighten it down until it stops turning. You don't over tighten it or force it. The other thing you have to adjust is the air shutter on the burner, which is the amount of air that comes in. You're going to open that wide open to get maximum air. Because we have higher gas pressure, They've got more gas or more volume of gas flowing through. We need to give it more air. Okay, so you need to mix those two together. They mix where? I was going to put that question in. They mix where? Yeah, it's a venturi. Venturi. This little twisted part of the burner is called a venturi, and then it causes the gas and air to mix in here before it mixes with air out here. What do we call the air out here? Anybody remember? Secondary air. Secondary air. I like that one. <laughs> All right. In this image, which represents LP gas pressure to the range, which A. one of these? A. 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 The higher the pressure, the smaller the opening. Mm -hmm. So on this regulate on, on this actual valve, this orifice we'd have to change. If you had them all laying on the table and accidentally mixed them up, you're like, oh no, I gotta set it for LP. How do I know which one? Just look at the opening. The smaller ones are gonna go on the stove for LP. The bigger ones are gonna go on the stove for natural. You don't have to look for words or anything. They're preset from the factory for the size of the burner as far as the BTU or the heat rating that the burner is gonna give. Okay, yes. What about the medium size? What about the medium? That, that could be for natural. This is probably natural. This is probably LP. This one's way too big. But I, I was looking for a picture on the internet. And so I just picked it. And I said, well, which one would be LP? The answer is going to be the smallest one. Okay. Which image represents natural gas pressure to the range? I would have selected B or C. And if it marked you wrong, trust me, I have not finished going over it. 
but we had a problem with the, with the class webpage today, and we'll talk about that after we're done recording. Okay, so the answer is B or C for natural gas. Okay, which image represents no gas pressure to the range? Um, A. Two, yeah. two, one, because there's no pressure. no pressure. Here would be pressure, here would be pressure. What's the reading of this one? Six. Uh, six. What's the reading of this one? Four. Two, Wait, three. One and a half, one and a half. Add them together, you get three. So this is natural. This is close to LP, a little low, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Seven. Now, here you can see power goes through the thermostat, through the igniter, then through the safety valve and out. That's in series. And I forgot who, I think Darius said, you know, if you were wondering what, which one this one, it says um, control, no wait, example oven glow ignition. It says glow igniter right there. So I don't know how some of you missed that. It's written glow igniter, and here is glow ignition. That's the answer. I got this one. Okay. The next one here, these are what? Uh, surface igniter switches. Surface igniter switches. Those are the switches that turn on the surface igniter. We talked about that in the class. What's this? Ignite. That's the spark module. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it provides the spark to light the gas. This provides the spark. Okay, that's uh, control flow rate. We had this piece right here. It wasn't blue, but I gave this an example. We talked about how to test it and how power goes and everything. Switch wires. Okay. Yeah, switch the wires if one work and the other one don't. Um, then controls flow rate. That's the next one, right? Yeah, that's it. Regulator. It controls the rate of flow. No. The orifice controls the flow rate to the burner. The regulator, what does it say? Maintains constant pressure throughout the appliance. The regulator is like if we turn four burners on, the pressure drops a little bit, the regulator opens up. If you turn off two burners, you don't want the other ones to jump up. So the regulator maintains the gas pressure in the entire oven, depending on how many burners are running or not. Okay, the flow rate is the orifice is controlling the flow rate of gas. Okay, it's like jets on a carburetor. They control how much gas flows into a car engine. Number 13, gas pressure is mentioned on instruments of water come on what type of instrument? It's a manometer. 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 Okay. Uh, what size orifice is used for LP? One. The smallest one. Now, in commercial gas, when I worked on that, we actually had to take the orifice, and if I had a larger orifice on a burner, and let's say it was set for natural, and someone bought it and put it in another kitchen that's running off LP, these burners wouldn't burn right. So we didn't really change orifices but you say, but it's natural. The orifice is too big. You can't make the hole smaller. What we did is we had this tool that, have you ever seen like the magnetic bits you put on your screwdrivers and mm -hmm. stuff? Well, there's a drill bit set that the back of it looks like the magnetic Phillips and flat bits that you put in your, your magnetic screwdriver. But they're different drill bits and the drill bits are numbered sizes. And you don't put them in a drill but you would put it in here and you drill out the hole even larger and you put this spud inside of it. And then you would take another drill bit and if you said, okay, well this is a 5,000 BTU burner, you'd say for natural gas, 5,000 BTU burner use 0 0.30 drill bit. And you'd have this accessories of drill bits, you'd have to find that number and you drill out the spud to make the opening the size you want. So basically you'd make the hole bigger, shove the spud in there, and then you would drill the spud out to the right size. And that's how we did it commercially. Okay. What is the recommended gas pressure for natural? Three to five, Three to five Three to inches five. of water column pressure. LP? 7-11. Get yourself a Slurpee while you're there. Okay. 
When the burner and the gas dryer is first energized, which valve opens first? This one. Which one of these valves open first? Number one. The first valve, number, number one. Yeah. The second valve opens when? Same time. When does it open? Uh, when the igniter gets hot enough. Point. Okay, but what tells the burner the igniter is hot enough? Look at the flame switch. The flame switch. Right now, the flame switch is closed when the burner is cold. When the igniter gets hot, this thing is sitting right next to it. When it gets hot, this switch opens. Now the current can't go around this valve number two, and it goes through valve number two and opens it. So this is cycling by the igniter, and this coil here is based on that. Okay? Let's go back to our test. How many valves are found inside of the gas burner assembly? Two. Valve number one has how many solenoids? Two. Two. Again, that's what? What are they called? Assist. And cold. Cold. Cold and assist. Or it was. Secondary. Valve number one and, and a primary and, and the booster or whatever they called it. What is the part that tells the gas dryer burner to let gas out and the igniter reach correct temperature? We just flame said switch. it. The flame switch. The flame switch. All right. Thank you. Any questions on the test? You can stop the video.